lawyer and and one of maybe the priests or the people that take care of the the church, the followers of the books of Moses to the letter of the law. Uh, they were the ones eye for an eye, boy. They were the ones that if you messed up and they caught you, they'd stone you. Now, we all know that they made mistakes, just like we do. But they hid theirs, they kept theirs undercover. They kept theirs behind closed doors. Because there was the possibility that if they got caught, those other Pharisees would stone them. And they knew it. So this man's invited Jesus into the house. And this woman comes in, and it says, uh, Verse 37, and behold, a woman in the city which was a sinner. So, you got a Pharisee sitting there, and he invited Jesus into the house to eat. And this lady comes in, and she's just a lowly old sinner like me. But she knew Jesus was in there. And she didn't have but one thing that, 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 more than likely in this world, it says she come in with an alabaster box of ointment. And ointment was prized. It was a, uh, it was like, you know, uh, some perfume. Uh, in 2022, you can get perfume for 25 cent a gallon if you want to. And you can get perfume that costs $2,000 an ounce. That's the variety we have now. But back then, when they took the time to make an ointment or a salve or something like that, it was worthy. It was prized. It was something that you value. Uh, she come in, and in verse 38 it says, And stood at his feet behind him weeping, and began to wash his feet with tears. And did wipe them with the hairs of her head, and kissed his feet, and anointed them with the ointment. She did everything she could possibly do. This is 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 my prayer that that when I meet Jesus, this is how I meet. Him. This is how I meet him the first time. I owe him. He don't owe me nothing. He did for me. He took my place. He took my punishment. I hadn't done nothing for him. I hadn't taken no beating for him. I ain't got no stripes on my back for him. And that woman didn't either. She didn't either. But she loved him. She knew what he had done for her. Because of the price he paid. Because of the debt that I owe that he paid, my sins can be forgiven me. I've talked about this in here before. A sin, thou shalt not steal. Okay, if I steal a possession of Brandon's, I have offended him because I have took something that belonged to him. And I could either decide to make that right or I can get caught and society can make me make that right. But what I can't do is make it right with God. God told me thou shalt not steal. And when I stole something from him, I told God, yeah, I know what you said. I heard you. But I'm going to do it anyway. I want that thing right there and I'm going to take it. How do, I, how, how, how do I make up for that? For the disrespect I just did to him. How do I make that right? How do I undo that memory of him watching me disobey him and tell him, yeah, I know. I know. I know it's wrong. But I want to do it anyhow. So I'm going to do it. This woman had probably been in situations like that. 
it says she was a sinner. It took me a long time, you know, and we're not to judge the, the sinner. We're, we're, to, we're not to hate the sinner. We're to hate the sin. And I heard that, and I heard that, and I didn't understand that. And then I got to thinking for a while, maybe only, only God can get that right. Maybe he can separate the two, because I have a hard time with that. You know, I'm willing to accept the blame for everything I did wrong. I'm not going to lie about it. I'm not going to deny it. I'm not going to run from it. Uh, if I got punishment coming, then I'll have to accept it. I apologize, and I throw myself on the mercy of the court. That's all I can do. And try to make amends, try to fix things, try to try to fix whatever I tore up. And maybe that's how she felt. And and I've often wondered, I know so many people that, just like me, they were raised around the church. And they got enough of it. They, they knew, they knew, just like I knew. You know the basic Christian, the Christmas story. You know the basic Easter story. If you... If, any kind of upbringing at all. And, and every, you know, I know that they know just like I knew and that they looked away just like I looked away. And then I look back. I'm trying to get them to look back. And uh, it's, it's, it's what Jesus told these people right here. He had two people, one of them owed him 500 and one of them owed him 50. And he decided to let both of them go. All right, well, you might be the one that owed him 50. I owed him five. So... When I enter into his house, uh, I should be giving him water for his feet. And if I ain't got none, it can be my tears. And then I should wipe his feet clean. If I ain't got nothing to do that with, maybe I'll have a little hair sprouted out on the top of my head. I can use that. I can use that. And if I got any oil, I don't want it. I don't need it. If it's valuable, he can sure have it. If anybody would want it, he can sure have it. If it'll do him any good, he can have it. And uh, I skipped the, the cease not to kiss his feet. <laughs> it's hard for me to think sometimes of Jesus the King because uh, worldly kings, man, no, I'm, I'm, I thank God I was born when I was born, where I was born, because I wouldn't get along with that. You don't tell me to take a knee, and you don't bow down, and I, I and, and, and maybe they, those cultures and all the way they do things, maybe that is proper, maybe that is right. I'm not going to tell them they can't do that. But I, knew I wasn't, wasn't, that ain't the way we was raised around here. And I couldn't stand it. But Jesus being the king, y'all can see me kissing his feet. Uh, before I got saved, somebody was said, man, one day you're going to be willing to kiss another man's feet. I would have bet the world against it. I would have bet everything in this world and the universe never happened. Ain't that scared of nothing? I don't want nothing that bad. There ain't nothing you can do. He did something. He did something. I'm 56. I ain't found nobody else worthy of that kind of admiration and that kind of respect. Uh, it's like uh, when 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 uh, me and uh, brother Spencer and, and brother Mike and brother Keith were up here 
for the veterans, the, the, the ones that gave their lives, did what Jesus did for our eternity. They did that for our freedom. They did the same thing, but it was just for that, that one thing, that the ability to be live your life free, as a free human being on this planet. And they, were, they, they thought so highly of that that they were willing to lay down their life for it. Just like Jesus thought so highly of us and our salvation and our eternity, our eternity, that he said, I'm going to do whatever it takes, no matter what, I'm going to do whatever it takes to have them with me forever. I'm not going to let them come down here and tear it up in 100 years. i got a forever plan for every last one of them. And as hard as they try to tear it up, I'm not going to let them. So she did cease not to kiss his feet. And the whole time, go back and, 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 and just coming down through these verses, uh, the way he's telling this to this Pharisee and, and, and put yourself in his shoes because the Pharisee was a religious person. They believed in God. They believed in God of the Old Testament. They believed in the same God Moses believed in. They just never went no further than that. That's as far as they got. That's as far as they got. But they believed in God. And Jesus tells this man, he says, I entered into your house and you didn't give me no water for my feet. And he comes down a little bit, and he says, uh, you didn't give me no kiss either. And you didn't anoint my head with oil. You didn't do anything. And then look at what this lady's doing. And you're going to sit there and judge her. At the same time, I'll same time, you're not doing nothing for me. And she's sitting here constantly, one thing after another. I'm the only thing on her mind right now. And you're going to sit here and look down your nose at her? And it said she was a sinner, and it mentioned it more than once. It mentioned it twice. So this lady didn't live an angelic life. This lady had made mistakes. So why would she come in there like that? And the Pharisee just say, come on in, brother, and have a sandwich with me. And sit at the table. I'm going to have me one, too. Come on in. And, and, and yeah, you're going to get the same thing. Yeah, you're gonna, I'm just going to give you some of what I was going to have. Ain't nothing special. But come on in and break bread with me. I'll share what I got with you. And then this other lady comes in and she's willing to just drop everything and to do the best she possibly can for the Lord. And I'm thinking this Pharisee has, he was raised in the church. His mom and daddy told him how he was going to be when he was little. He didn't fight against it. He's tried his whole life to be the best Pharisee he could be. To be the best. He's probably the first one there when they open the doors at the temple on Saturday. Last one to leave. Shows up to all the feasts, has the right sacrifices, does what he's supposed to do. And has lived as close a life as you could live back in those days and call it godly. These are the only people on the planet that knew anything about God were these Jewish people. Thank God they wrote it down. Uh, and then you have one that didn't live so pure, that didn't go to temple, that didn't do the sacrifice, that never tithed, that didn't do none of the stuff right, But this one asked Jesus to forgive them. And when he did, they felt, yes, he did. 
Yes, he did. And night I got saved, I cried for about 30 minutes like a baby. Like a baby. I was soaking wet. Now, why did that happen? Because I knew something just happened. I didn't know what. I didn't know all my sins had been forgiven me. I didn't know how none of that worked. I didn't know how grace worked. I didn't know how salvation worked. I didn't know immediately I was going to heaven. That preacher kept telling me if I get saved, I'd go to heaven. He kept telling me if you get saved, he'll forgive you of your sins. So now all I got to do is, and, and, and he even told me, he said, if you don't have faith, pray for faith. And I did, I said, well, I, it's, I, I, I know it's still a book. It sounds good, I want to believe it. And I prayed for that faith, and he gave it. So how much do I owe? More than this lady. More than this lady. I get, I can't guarantee nothing. If I was mentioned in this book, it wouldn't just say he was a sinner and then tell a little story. No, they'd give you a little bit more than that. They'd give you a little bit more than that. They said, no, he, this is a bad one here. Mm-hmm. And the part that gets me, you know, they used a woman in this story. It could have been a man just as easily. Well, the, the, the main thing in this story was sin. Sin. And, and, and sometimes, you know, I see little things and I say, well, you know, maybe they should have put it like this. I don't mean that. <laughs> I, don't, I don't mean that. I ain't adding no words to my Bible. I swear I would never do that. But sometimes, you know, it, it, when I'm when reading this, it seemed like it should have said, save sinner. Save sinner. She was a saved sinner. Yeah, she's a sinner. She's a sinner, just like everybody that's going to bust through them doors up there in heaven. Everybody. Just like every last one of them. That's why so many unsaved people can't get over. Oh, y'all think y'all perfect? Yeah. <laughs> you think God's just going to forget about all the stuff you did? Man, I, I believe so much. I believe he'll forget about all the bad stuff you did. Yeah, he's got mine. And I used to be the one I had the hard time on you. Yeah, God's grace, amazing grace. It's amazing. It'll work on all y'all. I didn't see none of y'all out on Friday and Saturday night. I didn't see none of y'all in the places I was at. I pray none of y'all did a lot of stuff I did. Uh, you never said the things I said and thought the things I thought. So how much do I owe? It just says right here in verse 48, says, He told her, he, and he said unto her, Thy sins are forgiven. What's that worth to you? And Ann said one day this week, she, just said she had such a great day, she had a good day, that she just felt like she had been rich all day long. I feel like that all the time. I count my money. And I know, well, one area I might be running a little shy, but it's something will happen and it'll be full in a minute. And if it ain't that, if the money's all right, well, then my back hurts. So something every day has got to slip in there and try to make you think, well, no, I'm not the richest and I don't have everything and I could be better off in this and I could. But uh, really, no, I'm, I'm a pretty rich. I'm a pretty rich man, and, and, and 99.9 of that goes to uh, about 10 years ago, I picked the Bible up and started reading it and started believing it. Not just reading it, but believing it. And after I got saved, I had to tell myself, if you tell people that you believe in this, then you got to believe in what it says. Don't be what they're going to call you. Don't be a hypocrite. If you don't believe it, don't sign up. 
Don't get involved. Don't lie to people. And sure don't lie to yourself. And I'm not going to lie to you. I come through this Bible and I come through it and I come through it. And there are things in here that I had problems with. When I hit them. And I kept having problems. And I kept, because I'd run into things and I'd be like, how in the world does something like that happen? You go back and, and, and reread about some of the battles that Joshua fought. These people were outnumbered, outgunned, out everything. Should have just been stumped. But they made it. Somehow. And history showed that this group of people survived. This other group of people no longer exist. So it goes along with everything else I've been taught. And then I had to put God in there. And when you put God in there, everything's possible. And you hear that, I heard that and I heard that. But until I accepted that truth in my heart and in my mind and in my body and in my soul, it was just words. Now God can do everything. That lesson finally sunk in. Anything you can think of, if he gives us the ability for it to cross through our mind and it not be sinful, he can do it. He can do it in a New York minute. The, the, the craziest of the crazy that you can think of, if it was his will, the sun go out today, take two weeks off, and come back on in two weeks, that's what would happen. And if it was his will that we all be okay after that, then we would. If it's not his will, we won't. And he could do that as easily as I just thought up the example. And it's quick. It's amazing. And when you have that, it makes this book... And now, to me, uh, Noah getting all them animals on the boat. That's a big joke. Sure he did. He didn't have to do nothing. All he had to do was go open the door. And the animals just come in. Uh, did the man live inside the whale for three days? Sure he did. He's liable to have had, uh, like some of the little cartoon pictures you see, he's liable to have one of them little candlestick things and had him a little candle down there. And he might have had a can of beans. I don't know. I don't know. But I, he did fine. I'm sure he didn't like it because he was he was being punished. He was being taught a lesson. He wasn't God wasn't taking him on a pleasure cruise to, to bless him and say you, you know you just been preaching just where where I wanted you and saying everything I told you to say. You hadn't left nothing out, and we'll send you on a sea cruise. That wasn't what this was. That was you hard headed. I'm about to show you something. I'm about to show you something. And my guess is Jonah was probably a fisherman. I don't know that. I had never read that nowhere. But And if he wasn't, he was a sport fisherman. So when he was off work, he'd like to go try to catch fish and try to catch him a few for supper. And I guarantee that's why God did that. All your life, you've been going down there thinking, well, you're smart and you're the best fisherman and you can trick them fish and... You, you, you can catch whatever kind of fish you want to on whatever kind of day. And, and you know all there is to know about fish, don't you? Well, let me show you my little pet fish over here. Uh, um, I got someone that you don't know about. Oh, down he goes. Uh, Samson killing a thousand men with a jawbone of an ass. Sure. Power of God come down on him. And I bet he looked like that little Tasmanian devil thing in that in them cartoons. He was just like a little tornado with that, and all you could see was that bone coming out whopping him every time he probably took about that quick. And it's like, golly, that was a thousand. And he's like, that all you got? And ready to go get some more. Did he push the building down and kill God's enemies? That's what it says. One man push a building that size and just hit it in the right spot. 
and knock those pillars and the whole thing just come crashing down. Did that happen? A lot of that stuff is laying over there in heaps now. A lot of it, all you see is pieces of it that are left. So eventually it fell. Why couldn't it have fail when that one man told God, push that thing down for me? And down it comes. Uh, we looked it up one time, I think it's in Kings, first or second Kings, and uh, about the, the, the iron swimming. The man's chopping wood next to the river and the, the head of the axe comes off and goes flying. And I believe it's uh, Elijah, it might have been Elijah, it was one of them, I think. And he tells him, just go down there and hold the stick. So he goes down there and holds the, the handle. And the iron swims back over there to him and jumps back up on that handle. Now, did God really do that? Yeah, because that man needed that axe. God had told him to work. Hey, they had work to do, and that man needed that axe. And back that axe came. But it's a piece of iron, Max. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, after the flood, all kind of stuff got washed down that river. Refrigerators, washing machines, anything you can imagine got picked up and toted by that water down through there like that. Uh, you mean to tell me God couldn't take that water and scoot that rock right on over there? He moves these rocks down here all the time. All the time. The big ones and the little ones. If he don't like where the big ones are, he can move them too. And we're just talking about a little axe head. It probably wasn't much bigger than that. So could, could, could my God do that? My God could do that with his eyes closed and his hands behind his back. You know, if, if, if your God can't do that, you probably need to look for a better God. I got a better God to show you. Mine created the heavens and the earth in one day. I mean, in six days, seventh day he took off. And like the entire Old Testament, that was an example to us. Work six, take one. Work six, take one. Every other element of time that we use, you can find it in nature. You know, we use the moon cycle. Uh, we have our months. We have uh, our calendar year. Uh, the only place you'll find a seven-day week anywhere is right here in Genesis. That's where it came from. And everybody around the world uses seven-day work week. They're on the same day as we are. They might call them a funny name, and I might not be able to pronounce how they say Wednesday, but it's still the same, the same system. And that comes straight out of Genesis over there. But it says, at uh, the end of 47 here, and we'll use this to close with, uh, but to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. For, that says, uh, for she loved much. Her sins, which are many, are forgiven. It says there, and I think that's the third time it mentions her, her past. And it says they are many. Are forgiven, for she loved much. She loved much. Uh, I don't think I don't want to aggravate nobody and I don't want to elevate where I am but because of my past I don't think nobody can love him more than I do I, I, because of what I, I know how much he had to do now, you might think that, that most of that whooping wasn't yours. Some of them stripes was yours. Now, I should have got the whole thing, the whole package. He took it all. The crown of thorns, I deserve that. The spear, I deserve that. The nails, I deserve that. The beating, the mocking, I mocked people. I did that to other people. Thank God I never spit on my body. But I deserve that. I deserve that. So how much, 
how much am I supposed to love him? And I told him, he can have everything I got. Whatever I got, he can have it. And uh, whatever I can do, I'll do it. If he'll let me know. And so, but it's because of, of this right here. It's because of that right there. And that woman didn't have nothing else to give the Lord but love. And that's what he was asking. The main thing, uh, and I know as, 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 as Christians, as churchgoers, as uh, just decent people, uh, you want to reach out and you want to help as many people along the way as you can. Especially when it comes to the Lord, the gospel, to Jesus. If you can leave one person to the Lord, just one. If I can leave one before I leave out of here. And, and I'd like to know that because I'd show sure rest a whole lot easier when it come my time. And I knew I was laying there. I said, well, I, I, I crossed, I checked that box. I got so-and-so. I didn't do so-and-so to Jesus. And I know I did that. Thank the Lord for it. Wish I could stay a little long. Maybe I can get another one, Lord. Um, but it's because I know how much he did for me. And I truly believe he took my place. He took my place. It's appointed unto man once to die and then the judgment. Never been scared of dying in my life before I got saved now. Look forward to it now. Look forward to it. Because it's going to be something. According to my Lord, it's going to be something. So I look forward to it now. Never was concerned with it or worried about it. I ain't going to lie to you. When I was unsaved, I told you I didn't believe, and I told you I didn't care, and I told you I didn't worry. Don't you think I didn't think about going to hell every once in a while? And why did I think that? Because my mom made me go to church for two or three years when I was a little young man, and I heard it over and over and over again. So as hard as I tried to run from it, it was still there. It was still there. Every time I sobered up, there it was. <coughs> there it was. That's why I didn't sober up much. Boy, the way you live. The way you live. You're not going to be with your mama forever. You're not going to be with Uncle Jake. You're not going to get to see your pa. They ain't, they ain't going to be where you go. And that wasn't something I would have said back then. That's something I would say now. But something on the inside of me was saying that. Something on the inside of me was saying that. Boy, you better get right. You better get right. You better get right. You better get right. And when I got right 10 years, my time was running out. I didn't have enough. I had a wife and two kids, and I didn't think I could take care of them. And I was about ready to give up. I said, somebody else do better than me. I ain't getting it done. Everybody I ever worked for, I told them, if I can't do this job, I'll quit. You won't have to fire me. I ain't about to stand here and take your money and not be able to do what you paid me to do. That ain't going to happen. Not in this world. I don't want your charity, I want a job. And if I ain't smart enough, or I ain't strong enough, and I can't figure it out, I'm gonna come to you and say, look, man, this just, this ain't for me. This is beating me to death. I gotta get out of here. I can't take this. Instead of stand there and try to trick you and do subpar work every day I go to work and know it and turn it into you, and then cash a full paycheck every week. I couldn't do that when I was the biggest sinner in Georgia. Man, I got some kind of pride, some kind of, de I'm not going to do nobody like that. That's stealing. To me, that's stealing. I, I used to get on to people all the time. They'd be trying to do as little as they could all day long. And I tell you, you're stealing. 
You, you better be glad you ain't stealing from me. I'd lock you up. I'd call the sheriff. You back here stealing my money. You stealing and you wasting my time that I paid for. I want them locked up. Put them in handcuffs. Take them out of here. Now, I don't want Jesus to think like that of me either. When I get up there, I don't want him to say, boy, you took that grace and run with it, didn't you? You sure like that grace, didn't you? You sure like me forgiving you, but you wasn't so, you wasn't so forgiving sometimes. And you sure like me blessing you and doing things for you, but you sure didn't do very much for me. And what about when you could have helped this one and you could have helped this one? And you held back. What if I'd have held back, Max? What if I'd have held back? What if I'd let you go when you was doing all that stuff and I'd just let you go on by yourself like you wanted to be, like you wanted to do? What if I'd have done that? Uh, I'm scared to death of how I deal with Jesus. It took me a long time to find him. And I ain't gonna let him go. I might disappoint him. I might let him down. And he might not be happy with me sometimes. But I'm gonna hang on to him as tight as I ever hung on to anything in my life. He's all I got to get me through this old world. I'm so sick of the world. I'm sick of hearing about it. Y'all know I used to tell you I was addicted to the news, man. I listen to that stuff all day, all day, every day. I don't hardly cut it on no more. I've got to where I just about don't care what inflation is. I don't care how much gas costs. Try not to look. The only reason I look if I go to the store or something is to make sure I don't get up there and I ain't got enough money to get what I want. So I do kind of add it up as I go, but it's not, ah, oh, chicken is $10, and, well, I'm going to eat the chicken. So and if I didn't spend it on chicken, I'd spend it on something else. So um, try not to worry about the money. Try not to worry about the politics. The next election... I've been here in the next election for a year and a half. I've never got to see it. We're going to have another one, and then, the, then it'll be the next election. And I don't remember any elections in my lifetime where after the election, things got a whole lot better. Or my life changed. Oh, because of President so-and-so. They did this for me, and they did, ain't none of them ever did nothing for me, and they ain't going to do nothing for me. I ain't on that old donor, donor list. I ain't never sent them no money. And if you don't send them no money, they don't know your name. <laughs> they don't care about you either. Uh, all they want you to do, go vote for. I'm about tired. You know, I know that's a civic, and I do that, and jury duty's tied with that, and I believe in that. And But I'm torn, man. I really don't got where I just don't care. I'm, uh, I got a loser on one side, a, a lying loser on one side, and a lying loser on the other side. Don't like near one of them. When's somebody regular going? When's somebody from my church going to run? That's what I want. Somebody that I know. Somebody that worked around here. Somebody that raised kids around here. And that's what we got away from as a society. Now, all we do is put lawyers in there. The very uh, profession God warned us against. Watch them lawyers. Y'all better watch them lawyers. You better watch them. Because they write down one thing and it sounds so pretty, but boy, when they go in that courtroom over there and they read it, it sounds so much different. And it means so much different than what you thought when they read it over here. It's terrible. Uh, but I love, still love reading my Bible. I can't get enough of that, so hopefully that's the Lord's way of letting me know I'm going in the right direction. Keep looking at this and don't look at the rest of it and you won't lose your mind, Max. That's what I've been hearing lately. You won't go crazy. You, it, it won't get to you. You won't get down. Everything's going to be all right. And just hang on. And, and I keep uh, remembering the phrase, watch and pray, watch and pray. So when I see all this apocalyptic stuff, I just watch. I'm not going to run down the road going, Lord's coming back right now. Lord's coming back right now. Well, he's coming back, but... Maybe today, maybe tomorrow, I don't know. Uh, it'll be the perfect time. It'll be the perfect time. And I just don't know when that is. As far as I'm concerned, it was about five minutes ago, so that just tells you I'm wrong. 
Uh, yeah, I think any minute. And we'll close on that. Uh, dear Lord God, we thank you so much for your word, Lord. We thank you so much for your love and your forgiveness, your mercy and your grace. Uh, we thank you so much, Lord, for all the stories that uh, just show these things and, and how that you came for, for uh, the sinners and the broken, that you're in the business of healing and mending and, and making whole the things that we've tore up. Uh, we just ask that your presence continue in this building this morning, Lord, and just lift up Pastor Jr. Uh, give us all a message that we need to, to draw us closer to you and be more like you. We love you and we praise you, and we just pray you'll continue to bless and be with East Juliet Baptist Church. It's in your precious name, Jesus, that we pray. Amen.